Welcome to our very first lecture in this extremely odd semester of fall 2020. My name is Dr. Gotti, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course throughout the entirety of the semester. What I'm going to be doing in this first lecture is kind of giving you a brief overview of all the ins and outs of this class. We'll reserve our time talking about what psychology is all about and how we're going to address specific topics in our next lecture. But in this one, hopefully what we can do by having you watch this is give you a lot more clarity on some of the unique things that we're going to be trying to do this semester in order to get information across to you in pretty much the same way we were doing it before, but in adjusting to all of the kind of newness of this online world that we find ourselves in. So with other, without further ado, let's get started. First off, I guess I should tell you a little bit about myself. Obviously, we don't necessarily get to meet in person in this first lecture, but we will have weekly, actually bi-weekly, uh, meetings that hopefully you'll get a chance to know who I am a little bit better. Uh, my name is Chris Gotti. You can pro call, probably call me just Professor or Dr. Gotti or he, him, uh, when talking with friends about me. And if you want to know a little bit about my background, I come from a suburb of Minneapolis. Uh, I was born and raised there all the way up into my college career where I went to the University of Wisconsin at Eau Claire. And then I ended up doing my graduate work at UC Berkeley. Uh, nowadays, I spend most of my time doing classes like this and taking care of two very rambunctious boys who are in their childhood years and doing lots of things to make their father's hair probably come out eventually. Uh, my wife is uh, also in psychology. Actually, she's a clinical psychologist over at Kaiser. Uh, and uh, essentially, we are all at home right now trying to make things work as we're adapting to this whole process. So if you are interested in learning more about my career in teaching or some of the research that I did as a graduate student at UC Berkeley, feel free to reach out. But uh, hopefully just by kind of covering this basic stuff, you feel a little bit more connected uh, to this class like you would if, say, I was giving these lectures in person. This brings me to a really important topic, and that's how are we going to present the material in this class? Now, I know some of your instructors have decided to have what's called synchronous classes, where you meet in person at set times every week and they lecture to you over something like Zoom. Uh, but what I've found over the years, because I've been doing a lot of online instruction even before this coronavirus outbreak hit, uh, is that asynchronous lectures tend to be significantly easier for students to, to kind of, I guess, process the information in. And it allows for people who, when we get into this online world and develop busy schedules, to kind of try to tackle the information at their own pace. So for our course, we will meet on a regular basis just to kind of catch up on things. But what we're going to be doing in terms of me getting the material across to you is having me record usually two to three lectures per week posting them online and just expecting you to watch them by the time that they're scheduled. I know that usually people like to watch them at the exact time that they're scheduled, but in terms of being able to consolidate information and have discussion meetings that will be helpful, and we'll talk about that very soon, uh, you want to make sure that you've actually watched these lectures before the scheduled meetings that, that kind of link up to them. Uh, and if you're watching them, it's really important to note that you want to treat these just like you would an in-person lecture. That means you should be taking notes on all the stuff that's up here. That means you should be making sure that you can create connections between the mirror material that we're covering and that you categorize, or organize it in a way that should help you reference that information as you progress in the papers and the exams and the other things that are really critical in this class. I've already alluded to this a couple times, but in addition to having these lectures, we are going to have weekly meetings. 
So it's my expectation that either on Monday or Friday of 10 of the weeks throughout the semester, you will log in to the Zoom meetings that I've given you a link for on the course syllabus. And we will, for around 30 minutes or so, just talk about how we're doing. I'll maybe give some updates on assignments or things that you want to make sure that you have on your radar. And I will be taking attendance in these just to give you a little bit of credit for actually being physically present in the class. Now, if you plan to miss a meeting or two, there is an option that you can take advantage of where you post discussion responses before the start of the last scheduled meeting, uh, which is again on Fridays of most weeks. And by posting that kind of discussion response, you're at least showing me that you're physically and mentally still present in the class. Now I know these things might seem a little tedious to some of you, and you might want to just kind of do away with these or not have them as a component to this class, but I promise you, this type of thing is really helpful to students, especially ones that are more accustomed to taking in-person classes. Because the biggest challenge to many students taking these online classes isn't the ability to process things. It's the fact that we tend to get distracted by life when we don't have a set schedule for these classes. And oftentimes it results in us sort of skipping a couple things and not keeping up with stuff. And suddenly we find ourselves that this huge, massive amount of work that we have to try to do in a short period of time and nobody really holding our feet to the fire to get us to move fast enough. Um, fortunately, usually when we look at grades of people taking online classes versus in-person classes, grades are usually on average a little bit lower. It's a little odd though when you start talking about average grades dropping because what we also tend to see is that people kind of split in both directions. Some really thrive in this online format and others struggle a lot. So even though the average ticks down just a little bit, uh, usually what's causing this average ticking down is those students that can't keep up that end up failing the course. Uh, a large number of students, unfortunately, in these online classes do end up doing that if they fall too far behind. So my hope is, again, that these Monday and Friday meetings that won't necessarily be lectures, more just like check-ins and updates and giving people a chance to ask questions about things that maybe were covered in the lectures that they didn't understand, uh, will, will keep you on task and give you that opportunity to just ensure that you're still with us. Of course, again, if you need to miss one or two, there is that alternative discussion post that you can do. And that should theoretically allow you to adjust to the craziness of life that we're experiencing right now, if need be. Um, but if, if you do have it within your ability to make these weekly meetings, I strongly suggest that you opt for that, I guess, option uh, in this class. Another thing that we have as a requirement for this class in order to keep you up to date on stuffs is a program that's actually a part of the textbook for this class called Revel. Now, this is something that's actually a part of every Intro to Psych course, regardless of whether or not we're online or in person. And this is something that has been designed to help people really be able to kind of, I guess, involve themselves in activities and in questions that can help them really assess whether or not they truly understand the material. Now, here's the big thing with Revel though. There's lots of different versions of Revel that are out there. There's lots of different textbooks that it can be linked up with. So I encourage you to try to get yourself set up with a Revel account as soon as possible, clicking on the links that are provided for you on the course syllabus and getting started on these things as soon as possible because you do not, under any circumstances, want to miss this component to the class. It's not super heavily weighted, but these are those points that can either help boost you a little bit or frustratingly drop you a little bit at the end of the semester. You'll see once you start clicking on the Revel assignments that there's usually a chapter or two due at the end of each week. It's always going to be due on Sundays at 11 p.m. of the week, and the chapters are usually corresponding to what we covered within that week of presentations. And once the window closes for these Revel assignments, there is no submitting these things later. 
There's no late assignment submissions at 11.01 or anything like that. Essentially, you got to get these things done and get them, if you can, early. I'm trying to set the due date at one of the most awkward and unusual times because I want you to not wait until Sunday at 10.50 p.m. to get started on these things. I prefer that you get these things done as you're progressing through the material in the week before, so Sunday is just kind of a random time that passes and suddenly you see credit for those revel activities that you've done. Again, much like the weekly discussions and all the other stuff that I've mentioned, this component of the class can really help keep you engaged and help you avoid that slippage that sometimes happens for students who take these online classes. So please, if you've got questions about this, email me or just kind of review everything that you have in front of you on the syllabus and other sources so you can have a really firm grasp of what's expected of you for this component to the course. We're looking for the main, I guess we can call it meat and potatoes of this class. The things that you're primarily going to be graded on are four exams and one, two papers, or not one paper, two papers. Uh, I was reading instead of talking. Uh, anyway, the three exams that you're going to be taking, uh, the three midterm exams that you're going to be taking, are going to cover their own respective material. And the final that you're going to be taking, which is sort of optional, uh, is a cumulative one that's going to cover everything from the class. Now, the, the questions for all of the exams are going to be multiple choice. There's going to be somewhere between 40 and 50 questions per exam, but I'm going to make them by kind of adjusting things all worth the exact same amount of points in the end. So maybe varying levels of questions, but always worth the exact same totals. Uh, so sometimes the point, questions will be worth just a smidge more than other exams. In terms of what they're going to be covering, they're going to focus primarily on what we've discussed in lectures. Uh, also, they're going to look a little bit at what was covered in the readings. Uh, and they'll also be probably a little bit on some of the videos that I reference in these classes. Uh, so just make sure that you're going through everything that's assigned and that you're treating it like you would in an in-person class. That means, again, taking lots of notes, reviewing things, making sure you understand everything fully, and you should do pretty well on these exams. Obviously, for this semester, these are not going to be taken in person. They're going to be taken online on our Moodle site, and you'll see them posted and available for you as we start nearing the time for these exams to occur. You will, when you're taking these exams, be able to use your notes and books simply because I just cannot enforce this. But, and here's a big important caveat to this, make sure that you're taking these things alone and not coordinating with other students. If you do get caught doing this, coordinating with other students, sharing information or, or anything that's unethical, I will have to take action on this. And unfortunately, last semester when we switched to the online version of the class, there were several students in one of my classes that decided to try to take the exams together and collaborate with each other and in doing so we ended up not only having to fail them in the class but the school actually had some sanctions put on them and they are now kind of being monitored for whether or not they're in need of kind of being taken out of the school so I, I encourage you this semester do not mess with this components to the class these exams are not super easy just because you've got your notes and books you need to really make sure you're studying and you need to make sure that you're conforming to the rules that are in place for this because the school is very well aware of some of the issues that happened last semester when it came to online exams and online assignments and we are trying our best to ensure that we can maintain our academic integrity in a world like this. Now, the other thing that's really important to note here after talking about the exams is that you do also have, in addition to these exams, two papers that you'll need to do during the semester. Now, these papers, again, much like the Revel assignments, are aligned with what we have for all of our Intro to Psych classes. The, the, the kind of general instructions, details of them should be identical to every intro class that you 
could have a classmate or friend taking this semester. There's going to be subtle, small tweaks here and there, but it's pretty much the same thing. And we will, just so there's clarity on these paper assignments, have whole lectures designed to kind of just go over these things and make sure that everybody is crystal clear on what's expected for each of the two papers that are out there. That being said, we'll also have those discussion meeting times for you to ask questions. And, and I always encourage you, if you've got more specific questions about these things, to just email me and I'll be happy to respond and clarify anything that you need clarification on. Another thing that's probably important to note before we close out on this topic of papers is that much like the issues with exams, we have had issues with papers and plagiarism in the past. There are plagiarism checkers in place when people submit their papers and if you are using somebody else's paper or you are using the words of another author, be it somebody on the internet or an author of a famous article or, or something along that line, the plagiarism checkers will catch it. And unfortunately, I will again need to give you probably just a zero on it. But if it's egregious, I will need to fail you from the class or report it to the proper individuals at St. Mary's and actions will need to be taken. So if you've got questions about whether or not you're plagiarizing, please just ask in advance and I'll be happy to clarify things. But don't, please, under no circumstances, do something that's going to get you in trouble. I, I know it might sound like I'm doing these things because I really want to be punitive, but it pains me to have to make the reports that we have to make sometimes when people choose to do these things. And it's, it's never something that we do lightly, but it is something that we insist on doing at St. Mary's and, and almost every university in the Bay Area, because we do want to make sure that we are maintaining our academic integrity and people are earning the grades that they're being awarded. Now, we've covered kind of the basic components to the class. I'm guessing many of you now might, now might be wondering, how am I going to be graded in this class then? There's a lot of stuff that seems to be in place. Well, for this class, we're going to give you a grade based out of how many points you've earned, not whether or not you're doing better than other individuals or whether or not you know the, the material was too tough in certain components. What I simply do is I look at how many points out of 266 that you've earned. That's how many total points there are for this class. We'll detail it a little bit later as we progress. And the percentage of points that you've earned determines what grade you're in. Essentially, what I'm saying is there is no curving to this class whatsoever. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the main weight of your grade for this class is going to be on the exams. You have, as I mentioned, three individual exams and one cumulative final. Now you'll notice if you look down in the bottom that I put the, the final exam in parentheses. I did that on the last slide as well and I sort of mentioned offhand that that final exam is sort of optional. That's kind of a weird way of describing it, I guess. So what I do at the end of the semester is I take your four exams, if you've taken all four exams, and I look for which exam is your lowest score. If it's exam one, exam three, or the final, it doesn't matter which one, whichever is your lowest exam, I remove from calculating out in your score. So it's essentially like that exam, once it's removed, never happened. And the three exams that will be tabulated to figure out how many points out of 266 you've earned are the, the ones that remain. Now, it's really important to note, though, that if you only take, say, two exams, I don't just get rid of the other exams. You have to take at least three exams. And if you take three exams, those are going to be the ones that count towards your grade. The fourth one is the one that can then replace your lowest score if it is a lower score. So if you opt not to take the final, if you just say, I'm done, that's fine. That's perfectly okay. But keep in mind, you do need to take at least three exams. And if you end up taking four, your top three scores will be the things counted toward your grade. The Revel activities in total, because there are, I believe, 11 weeks of this, 
come out to 33 points. Maybe there's 12 weeks in this. I think you can maybe earn a little bit of extra credit for those if I recall correctly. And then your attendance slash participation during the weeks where we're going to have our meetings come out to 20 total points where you can essentially earn two points each week that we have those things by either coming to class and participating in either the Monday or the Friday one or by posting a discussion post by that Friday due date that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the other two things that are going to count towards your grade and add up to a considerable amount more than an exam are the applying learning paper which is the first paper that we'll be covering later on and the culture and development paper. Actually it's more of a poverty and development paper. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get to that section. But in total again these things add up to 266 points and you can always just figure out where you're at in terms of the grade by figuring out what percentage of the points that have been offered so far you've earned. Um, I, I don't do anything weird with the scales either. I guess you should mention that, mention that as well. If you're in the lower extremes, you're going to get a minus. And if you're in the upper extremes of every tens, you're going to get a plus. And I guess it's also important to note here before we close out that I don't do any rounding or last second extra credit opportunities. So don't, please don't ask for me to tweak your grade just a little bit or add something to you or give you some opportunity at the end because you're just a few points away from something. Your grade is going to be your grade. And to maintain the integrity of the class again, we need to keep things that way. Now, some of you might be wondering, after I've been going over this and kind of stressing what needs to be done to do well, you know, what knowledge I can impart upon you in order to be successful in this online format. As I mentioned a couple times, the best way to do really well is to keep up with everything. Don't fall behind. That's the major pitfall of most of these online classes. The other thing that I would strongly suggest you do in this class is to treat it like it were an in-person class with just shorter lectures and lots of opportunities to kind of check in on things. If you think that taking multiple choice exams with notes and books are going to make those exams super easy, you would be wrong. Unfortunately, I tend to see oftentimes in my intro classes that the averages in online exams are much lower than they are in the in-person exams, and it's primarily because people just think that they can rely on their notes in the book and get every answer right on these exams. To really be able to understand the application-based questions and a lot of the other questions that are kind of teasing apart specific ideas, you have to have a firm grasp on the material. That means while you're watching the lectures, take copious notes. If you're studying, review the book, review the notes, make sure you really do understand not only the material itself, but how the material relates to other things. So another thing that's very closely linked to this is that as you're going through this, treat it as something that's interesting, not as a chore. Psychology is meant to be fun. It's kind of designed in a way that allows us to explore some of the main questions that many of us have had even you know, in our early years of life. And if you can remind yourself of that as you're progressing, that this is supposed to be interesting, this is supposed to be fun, this can really help. It might also let you do the next thing that I strongly suggest doing, and that's keeping yourself engaged. If you've got questions, do not sit on your hands during those weekly meetings. If you need clarification on stuff, don't feel like you can't reach out via email or during my office hours where I have Zoom meetings and, and ask me questions on those things. I might not be physically present in your classroom, but I am doing my darndest to try to be remotely present for you if you need help on certain things. And this brings me to the last big thing that's important, and I've mentioned it a couple times already, to be able to ask those questions, to check in, to have fun with material, you again need to keep up. I know it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse here, but I promise you, if you can do that, you stave off so many of the problems that people encounter with these online classes. 
avoid that horrible thing that many college students unfortunately struggle with, and that's procrastination. Get the assignments done early, do the readings when you're supposed to, watch the videos at the right time, and if you do that, things just become easier. It just makes so much sense to do it, and I understand there's pushes and pulls of life, but if you can do that, I promise you, you will not regret it at the end of the semester. All right. going to mark the end of this first lecture. Hopefully you got some good information out of it. I encourage you now to go check out the course syllabus if you haven't already. Get maybe started on the next lecture, which actually gets into the material a little bit more. And hopefully after you've done all of that, you again feel more comfortable with the lay of the land. You'll be ready for our first meeting and you'll be rolling. Until I see you again, take care and good luck everybody.